In the Venafro area on 3rd November, the 6th Corps crossed the Volturno for the third time. The 3rd Division continued to press against Mignano. 504th Parachute Infantry on the right drove high into the mountains and guarded 5th Army's right flank. The 34th Division above Capriati crossed the river north of Venafro. The 45th Division moved up from Corps Reserve through Venafro and drove to push the Germans from the mountains beyond. Once more, our engineers faced the task of bridging the Volturno. Wind and rain continued. On 4th November, the Volturno, lashed by wind of hurricane velocity, changed overnight into a raging torrent. Against all difficulties, bridges had to be replaced quickly to keep supplies moving. Wherever possible, light vehicles crossed over the riverbed. The November rain came down unceasingly. Bivouac areas became flooded fields of mud. Military operations came almost to a standstill. Roads were stretches of mire that became deeper as we pushed into the mountains. Streams flooded over their banks, washed away temporary bridges and bypasses. All along the front, vehicles bogged down in mud. It was a back-breaking job to drain the almost liquid mud from the road. The forward movement of men and supplies became slower and slower. In the mountains, water gushed across the surfaced roads and roadbeds were washed out. By mid-November, transportation was almost at a standstill. Precious time lost, which the Germans used skillfully to build a new strong line of defense. The German winter line in the mountains above Mignano and Venafro. An immediate offensive against this line was impossible. There was too much work to be done behind our line, on bridges made useless by the enemy and the weather, on roads which were constantly a serious problem. Rock quarries supplied tons of crushed stone needed to fill in mud-soaked roads. From the front to far behind the lines, preparation went on for the 5th Army offensive against the German winter line. In the mountains were miles of trails over which supplies could be carried only on the backs of mules. The average Italian mule could support 220 pounds. 250 mules were required to supply the basic needs of an infantry regiment in the line. There could have been no winter campaign without mules. On the flats, our trucks could churn through the mud. On the highest slopes, only men carrying light loads could make the ascent. Between these two extremes, the use of mules was an absolute necessity. After two weeks on 1st December, we were ready to attack the winter line. On the right, the 6th Corps with the 34th and 45th Divisions was in contact with the British 8th Army. On the left, the British 10th Corps was made up of the 46th and 56th Divisions poised to cross the Garigliano River. At this time, a new corps, the 2nd, was brought into the center of the line and assigned command of the 36th and 3rd Division. Attached to this corps were the 1st Special Service Force, highly trained American and Canadian troop, the 1st Italian Motorized Group, and the American 1st Armored Division. This force was concentrated against the Mignano Gap, which we had to enter in order to break through to the Leary Valley, which led to Rome. 